So, um, you know, there, I must be honest, in terms of my friends, there were days where uh, my friends and family were the only thing that got me out of bed in the morning. <laughs> if it hadn't been for, for the support structure that I had, I probably would have just stayed there and done nothing for the, for the whole time. Um, cancer is potentially a very, very lonely journey to, to undergo. You know, um, people who have never experienced it don't have the same kind of understanding. And particularly with the melanoma, I found that there were so few survivors of a stage four melanoma that I couldn't really get any support from that kind of structure. Um, things like the breast cancer campaigns and, you know, the lymphoma, leukemia sort of campaigns have really taken off and it's fantastic for the amount of uh, airtime that they're getting and support that they're getting. Melanoma, I found that even though it was a common cancer, tended to be kind of a bit neglected and people who didn't know very much about it um, would very often kind of say, oh, what's all the fuss about? You know, isn't that just a mole kind of thing, which is really very undermining and, and difficult when you're experiencing the kind of side effects from surgeries and from chemotherapy type treatments that I was experiencing. So I almost got into a situation where some people sort of, I felt like I had to validate the type of, type of cancer that I'd ended up getting. And that's, that's a real mess. That's a real, you know, um, problem in my mind is that the people can perceive you as having gotten the wrong kind of cancer <laughs> and therefore you don't have the right kind of treatment. And I think that there is a lot of need for education and knowledge and support of patients who don't have necessarily one of the very well researched and very well promoted cancer. From, a, from the perspective of both a, a doctor, a psychiatrist, and a cancer survivor, that I have quite a unique perspective. And I think that in order to close those gaps, there is so much that can be done um, in terms of simple education systems and that kind of thing. You know, for, for breast cancer, they've got the mobile mammography unit that goes around to a lot of the community areas and does the mammography on the patients there. You don't even need that for mental health. You need a pen and a piece of paper to do a screening to see whether a patient is depressed or, or whatever the case may be. So, you know, and there's there's a lot of stuff that you can do that will massively increase quality of life in those patients. And also, it's my opinion that a patient who is resilient mentally is going to cope well better um, with, with the cope a lot better with the cancer physically as well. Um, so, you know, from that perspective, I think that there is a large space that needs filling.